Day friends, this is Demola Uyele. Awesome time we are having here on Leaders Are Right podcast, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this episode of this life changing podcast. I want to ask you a question What do you have in your heart? What do you have in your hands? And what do you have in your house? If you can answer these three questions correctly, you will never lack capital for life and business. That is a topic we have been discussing for some, for, uh, since the last episode of this broadcast. How to generate capital for career and business. Today, I want you to help me answer this question once again. What do you have in your heart? What do you have in your hands? And what do you have in your house because I want to teach you on how you can generate capital for life and business by starting with what you have. So you may want to subtitle sort of this episode, Start With What You Have. This to me is a profound statement, a profound counsel that if you can heed you will make success out of your business and whatever it is that your endeavor is. A lot of times, people look too far when they want to raise capital, like they say, for their businesses. A lot of people look at what they don't have. All right? They start uh, blaming themselves or blaming the government or blaming their past because of what they don't have. But God will never tie your prosperity to what you don't have. God will always tie your prosperity to what you have. Think about this in Exodus, when God was to speak to Moses to go and deliver the Israelites from the bondage of Pharaoh in Egypt. Moses needed capital to engage or to, to, to go on that adventure. God didn't ask Moses, what do you need? Or what are you looking forward to getting? God simply asked Moses, what do you have in your hands? So God seemed to tell Moses, what you currently have is enough a capital for you to make that adventure a possibility and a reality. He was telling Moses, don't look too far. I have already placed in your hands what you require to succeed in that endeavor. And that's the same thing I'm telling you also today. Don't look too far. God has already placed in your hands what you need to succeed in that business venture, in that career. So I'm teaching you today on how to recognize the value in what you currently have. So I've called it start with what you have. Perhaps what makes business story to be interesting when it is being told, it is because the people who are drivers of that business, they actually started with what they have. Aren't you going to be encouraged when a business mogul that has conglomerates and that has businesses here and there tells you, I started with 5,000 naira that I saved when I left college. And look at it, my business has become a mega business that, is, that has presence in all the nations of the world. That story is rather in, is more interesting than somebody who told you, somebody gave me $5 million and that's how I was able to start my business. As wonderful as that story is, you will not be as inspired as you would be when somebody, than when somebody tells you, I started with this money, I started with this mega salary and see what my business has become today. So I want to encourage you 
to understand that you can always start from what, where, what you have. All right? Start with what you have and from where you are. That's a very perfect coinage. Start with what you have and from where you are. If you can understand this principle, there is nothing you cannot achieve in life. Because our problem is that we look away from where we are. We do not consider where we are. In fact, we see nothing in where we are. We see greener pastures elsewhere and we see our home location as a desolate place. For anyone that must generate capital for life, for career, for business, they must recognize value in where they are. And they must see value in what they have. What you have and where you are is enough to start you on your journey to becoming a business success. So I want you to search your life at the moment and ask yourself, what do I have? Somebody may say, Pastor, you don't know me. I don't have anything. Don't, 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 don't assume that. You have something. In 2 Kings chapter 4, that widow was told by prophet Elisha. You know, she was in debt. Like some of you watching me right now, all right, you probably have some bills to pay. In the case of that woman, the creditors, they were already on her neck. They were about to take her only son. Just like a bank can be on your neck, they are, able to, they are about to take your only building, all right, to make up for the monies that you're supposed to have paid the bank. That was what happened to the woman. The creditor, they came to take her only son. And she was really, really, really bothered. She went to meet the man of God. And I love the posture of the man of God. The man of God didn't promise her a miracle that doesn't have a foundation. Like some men of God would do today, they would just do what I call abracadabra and all of that. Miracle is not mystical. It's not magic. There is a fundamental law you have got to obey in enjoying miracle, particularly financial miracle. So that woman came to meet Elisha in 2 Kings chapter 4 in need of a financial miracle to drive her life and possibly a business. And of course, I love what the man, the man of God said in that 2 Kings chapter 4. He said, what do you have in your, ha in your hands? What do you have in your house? What do you have? That was why I told you to answer those three questions, which I'm going to zero in on as I wrap up this broadcast. What do you have in your heart? What do you have in your hands? And what do you have in your house? So for that woman, the prophet asked her, what do you have in your house? And like some of us would be quick to say, man of God, I have nothing. The pandemic has affected my life, my business. I've got nothing. I've got no saving. I've got nothing in my hands and all of that. That was what the woman, that was what the woman was telling the servant of God. But because she was in the presence of the anointing and the anointed, suddenly her eyes opened. And that's why I believe you need anointed vessels in your life. They open your eyes to what you never knew existed. They look at the skill that you have been commonizing. And they let you see value in that skill that can generate capital that can drive your life and your destiny forward. They let you see the power of the idea you have been carrying in your heart that you have been winking away, that you have been despising. That is what the anointing does. The anointing and the anointed or the anointing is like touch lights. Anywhere you find the anointing, the light of God shines on the areas of darkness. The light of God shines on areas in your life that you never have seen possibility in. So that woman was almost saying, I don't have anything. But because she was in the presence of the anointed, suddenly her eyes got open. The jar of oil that her eyes got open to had always been there. Can I tell somebody today, hooking up on this broadcast, what you need to generate capital for life and business has always been there. I pray that the anointing of God upon this broadcast will open your eyes to see it. Because that woman was almost overlooking that. Man of God, I have nothing. And almost immediately when she uttered that statement, the power of God hit her mind, hit her memory as it were, and her memory was cast back to what she left her to. Okay, I think I have a jar, a jar of oil at home. I have nothing except a jar of oil. And I love that servant of God, Prophet Elijah, Elisha. He said, what you have is enough. And I need to tell somebody today, what you have is enough. Because capital, generating capital begins in rec with recognizing the what of what you have. 
Can I say that again? Generating capital begins with recognizing the what of what you have. I will say that again, maybe for the last time. Generating capital begins with recognizing the what of what you have. For that woman, the jar of oil she had been overlooking for some time, she started recognizing the what in that jar of oil. In John chapter 6, they needed to generate capital to feed 5,000 plus men minus women and children. And like some of us, we always say, we have nothing to feed these multitudes with because Jesus asked them that question. They said, okay, but there's a little lad here. Can you imagine that? I had five loaves of bread and two fish, and Jesus said, that is enough. And I need to emphasize to you again that what you have is enough. It is not first in the size of what you have. It is in the what or the value you give to it. Can I say it again? It is not in the size of what you have. It is in the what or value you give to it. The same 5,000 error that you are blowing away, spending anyhow, somebody is able to build a massive business out of it. You have the same money, but you have different sense of recognition. Somebody sees 5K that may not last him more than three days or one week, feeding and all that. Another person sees a 5K that can turn his financial fortune around. That is why you need teachings like this. You need to be in an, 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 an anointed atmosphere that would help you to recognize the value in what you have. 12,000 naira salary can make something great out of your financial destiny if only you can recognize the value in that 12,000 naira. The power of recognizing value in what you have will help you to ensure that even when you collect, because some people collect big salary, they even have something big, and yet they are commonizing it. I will have started a business, if not for the fact that my salary is still 100,000 naira. Ah! The only that, can, that somebody is already doing, doing massive business with. Because nobody has taught them to recognize value. So even when something of sizable amount enters their hand, because they have these eyes that overlook substance in whatever they have, they overlook it and it keeps them financially poor. All right, or stranded in business. So you have got to recognize value in what you have. So in John chapter, in, in uh, Second Kings chapter four, the woman admitted she had a jar of oil. The prophet of God told her that is enough. In John chapter six, the disciples of Jesus admitted there was a lad with a five loaves of bread and two fish. Jesus told them that was enough. And I think to and I and I feel like telling somebody today what you have is enough. Don't get me wrong. I am not saying what you have is enough for the entire business you want to build. But I'm saying what you have is enough for a start. What you really need in life and business and career is a start. Once you start, other things will begin to fall in place. But you must see possibilities in what you are starting with if you will eventually enter a future that you so desire. So the way you see what you have and what you are starting with we go a long way in determining whether you will enter a future of possibility or you enter a future of impossibility. So that woman recognized, or the prophet of God to recognize the value of the jar of oil she had kept at home, maybe for only God knows. And the moment she recognized that value, the servant of God told her, Go and do business with it. And I feel like telling somebody today, somebody to go and do business with that little money in your hands. You may not do business at that high level that you have envisioned, but you can start from somewhere. One of the beautiful things about doing a business is to start from where you are. I will never forget several years ago, about 15, about uh, 13, 14 years ago, when I was still on campus, a young man came to our campus to come and speak to us on finance and business those in that particular year. Is a baby, is a multi-millionaire now, maybe in billions, I wouldn't know now. Young man doing amazingly well in business. While he was telling us his story, he said he actually wanted to build a big business, but he never knew where he should start from. All right, but something just done on him. You need capital. 
what can you do? I wouldn't advise to do that, but that was what occurred to him. I can do, they, they say that in, in Lagos and some other part of the world, conductor, bus conductor. The person, you know, directing passengers into a vehicle. So they give him some amount of money on a daily basis. And he said he was able to do that for like six months or thereabout. He put those monies together. He went to a market in Yaba, Lagos or whatever part of Lagos. Started selling wares and selling stuff like that. From there, the money multiplied. He began to diversify into several other things. That was not where he was going. But he started from somewhere. He was able to mop up funds together. That now helped him to now do the real business he wanted to do. As at that time, he was into oil and gas business. He had several trucks working for him. He even had some trucks working for Dangote. As at that time. But he didn't start by with that. He knew where he was going, but he was never ashamed to start with what he had. He didn't even have money, but he had strength. He had strength. All right. He could go to the bus park to go and help direct passengers to the vehicle. Uh, take them to their destination. They gave him money on a daily basis. He pulled those money together after six months or thereabout. He went to the market, started selling some wares, and from there he began to build from there. I think the problem of most people is that they are, they are ashamed of starting small. Don't ever be ashamed of starting small. You can start small, you should start small, but you should not remain small. And that's why you must keep the vision of where you are going, where God has shown you, Keep it at the forefront of your mind, but never be ashamed of starting small. So in 2 Kings chapter 4, the prophet of God, Elisha, told that woman, Okay, you have just a jar of oil that is enough. Now go and do business with that jar of oil. Enter into your room, lock the door between uh, uh, inside, lock the door with you and your son in the room. Start pouring this oil. What the prophet was saying is start doing business with that jar of oil. Start pouring. That was business. Start pouring. She kept pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring. Like I normally say, this woman should have been the wealthiest woman on earth till today. Because a stream of income was open for her that was endless, you know, because the anointing was present. The instruction is that don't borrow a few vessels. Borrow as many vessels as possible and begin to pour. So she began to pour and pour. She came to a point where the scripture said the vessels were used up or finished. And the Bible said the oil stayed. If she had had as many jars or vessels as possible, the, oil, the business would still have continued and her streams of wealth would have been unending. Then, of course, she probably would have been the wealthiest woman or human being on the earth today. That is the power of recognizing the worth of what you have. That is the power of starting with what you have, where you are. In John chapter 6, you remember, after they recognized the worth and the value in the five loaves of bread and two fish, they were able to uh, ask the men to sit down and they began to do business with it. They were crying over the little fish and, 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 and loaves of bread they had. Like some of you would do, you cry over your meager salary, cry over the 10K that your uncle has managed to give you to start out life, cried over whatever it is you're crying over. They never cried over that. They took the loaves of bread and two fish, they lifted it up to God and gave thanks. Because attitude of thanksgiving will help you to see potential in what you have. So when they gave thanks, their eyes were open to what those five, Jesus actually gave thanks anyway, they, you know, and they began to see possibility in the, that loaves of those loaves of bread and fish, and they began to share it. And the scripture said they had more than enough. There are 12 baskets left of leftover. After they are fed, I believe, minimum of 12,000 people because men were 5,000 plus minus women plus children. That is the power of of recognizing the value in that little thing you think you have. That little money in your hands, that little skill, that little idea can bring you into a season of unending flow of wealth if only you can recognize the value and the worth of what you have. Let me leave you with a question I began with when I started this broadcast. What do you have in your heart? That's the idea. What do you have in your hands? That can be skill, money, or whatever. What do you have in your house? That can be materials or whatever it is you have been overlooking. When you look critically at those three things, you would be able to generate capital to drive 
your life, and your business. Thank you for your time with me today on Leaders Arise. I hope this broadcast has immensely blessed you. Let me have your comments and feedback. And of course, let me see uh, you know, you liking this page, subscribing if you're on YouTube, or following if you're on Mix LR. I look forward to having a great time with you on the next episode of this broadcast. Bye for now.